In this video, I'll be talking about which skins can help you win more matches. Now, you might be thinking, skins are cosmetic only. They can't help you win matches. And to that, I say, you're right. But, and that's a big but, you're also wrong. Dead by Daylight's killers have a wide variety of skins that can change their colors, shapes, and sizes. Picking the right ones can make you go from looking like a clown <laughs> to looking like a chameleon. Now, before we go shopping, we need a list. A list of things we want. We want cosmetics that modify any of the following. Weapon size, killer size, and clothing brightness. Our ideal combination of cosmetics will have a weapon that only occupies a small amount of screen space, not this, a killer model that is smaller or harder to see, not that, and clothing that blends in with the majority of the game's environments, definitely not that. Apart from a few exceptions like Mount Ormond, Holwyn Farm, and Eerie of Crows, the color palette of DBD's environments is primarily dark blue, dark green, brown, and gray. So the best clothing choices should look like mud, basically. So now that we know what we're looking for, let's get shopping! First up is Trapper. His default outfit isn't too bad, but his brightly colored arms and mask are easy to spot. I think we can do better. Quite an improvement. A little blood splatter darkened him up nicely. And his bolo machete is as minimalist as his weapons get. Next is Hillbilly. His skin and shirt are a little too bright for our liking. Let's see if we can fix that. There we go. That bloody torso did wonders for covering up that peachy skin, and the busted shotgun removed the hammerhead on his weapon, making it easier to see in the first person perspective. Now Wraith is already wrapped up in some dark threads, but perhaps we can find an even darker set for him. Just look at that difference. A little tar on the cloak, some mud on the wrappings, and suddenly, you might mistake this tall boy for a tree. Next we have Nurse. Her white dress and pillowcase mask make her an easy target to spot, even from far away. Maybe we can do something about that. Now there's a nurse who's dressed to attend some survivor funerals. As for her weapon, the poisonous scythe is thinner and easier to see through than her bone saw, making it the ideal choice for a nurse searching for her patients. Next is Myers. He's a licensed killer and doesn't have many cosmetics to choose from, but let's work with what we've got. There we go. While the outfit is only marginally darker, the real difference comes from swapping out his knife for the screwdriver. It's a lot thinner in first person, making it easier to spot survivors. Now Hag is already on top of the trend, with her muddy skin and minimalist clothing and hairstyle, but can we go even further? What a makeover. Good luck spotting this one anywhere except broad daylight. Oh wait, you won't even see her there because you'll be dead by then, won't you? A tall doctor with glowing white eyes and a white coat is about as obvious as you can get. Perhaps we can find something more subtle.
Looking spiffy, Doc. The new headwear and coat did wonders darkening up his complexion, and the wooden cane is thinner than his usual metal rod he carries, making it easier to monitor and abuse your patients. While a bright bunny mask might fool some animals into thinking you're harmless, survivors will start running the moment they catch a glimpse of it. Let's hunt for something better. There we go. We added some nice layers of camouflage here with the dark mask and coat. And the handmade hunting axe has a smaller head than her other weapons, giving her a slight field of view advantage. A butcher wearing a yellow apron is like a giant walking warning sign. We definitely need to do something about that. A little splash of blood seemed to do the trick, and the sturdy hammer weapon is smaller than the default one, so it helps a bit when searching for your next skull to crack. Like most licensed killers, Freddy's wardrobe is pretty empty, but thankfully, his default outfit is already dark. I think we can enhance it though. Now there's a guy you'll only see in your worst nightmares. Or will you? The pig's default outfit is dark enough to blend in with many environments, but her giant pig mask and ears are pretty easy to spot. Let's explore some other options. Now that is a mean looking pig. Black leather clothing to blend easier, smaller pig head so it's less obvious, and the thinnest wrist blade you can get all add up to a stealthier killer. The only place Clown's Ringmaster outfit will blend in is at the circus, and sadly, DVD doesn't have one. So let's take that color scheme in a different direction. Now there's a clown who's not fooling around. Blood covers up most of the yellow accents on his coat. And the fish cutter weapon has the thinnest blade of all his knives, which should help you keep your eyes on the prize. I know Spirit can't help that her skin is bright blue, but when she's not phasing, it makes her one of the easiest killers to see coming. Let's see what we can do about that. Dressing her in blood is about as dark as we can make her. The woolen headband prevents her hair from waving in the air. And while the weapon choice isn't that important, since it's hidden most of the time, the Okinawan blade is the smallest you can get. Legion is pretty hard to miss with his signature smiley face mask and hoodie. Maybe one of the other gang members is wearing something less conspicuous. Now this looks more like something a criminal would want to wear. He's practically a shadow. And the sawtooth blade is the optimal choice for keeping your victims in your sights. While the flashy Robin crown may have garnered the attention of her followers back in Babylon, such brilliant colors are more of a hindrance now that she's a killer. Let's see what we can do about them. Is it just me, or does she kind of look like Batman? Anyways, the new headwear and robe are a much better match to our preferred color scheme. Now if only we could replace her weapon with a Batarang. Ghostface is already looking pretty good wearing this outfit, but let's try some other clothes on. I know, the mask isn't as ghostly, but a darker color will garner less attention while stalking survivors. The classic shroud practically turns Ghostface into a shadow, and the Damascus blade 
offers a slight field of view advantage over the others. Poor Demogorgon, he doesn't really have any cosmetics, but we can always drench him in blood. As for the Oni, his long white hair, red mask, and garish armor make him an easy threat to see coming. I think a makeover is in order. There we go. The new headwear gets rid of his mask and hair that can be spotted even from far away. And the new armor both darkens and trims the metal plating on his body. Now, Deathslinger's brown frock coat already does a great job covering him up, but I think we can take it a step further. As a killer who's all about sniping, a little camouflage can go a long way. His new hat changes the color of his hair so it better matches his coat, and his bangs also happen to hide some of his face, which is a nice bonus. Another licensed killer with a sad lack of cosmetics to choose from. Well, shower the man with blood. I'm afraid Blight won't sit still long enough for me to try some clothes on him, so let's make this quick. While the black tail coat and brown hood look a bit odd together, you won't find a darker combination for this speed demon. Charlotte here is in dire need of some new threads. She's literally wearing rags. Let's see what we can do. It might not be the prettiest dress, but it's better than what she had. And the rusted hook is smaller than her sickle, granting a slight field of view advantage. While Trickster may enjoy being the star of the show, he'll have a harder time pulling off a killer performance wearing such flashy clothing. Maybe we can tone it down a bit. Trickster simply refuses to button his blazer but at least we were able to dye it a darker color. And the blazing bat is the best option for keeping an eye on your audience. Or Nemesis, they didn't have any clothes in his size, so his default outfit is all we've got. Let's do what we can with it though. Pinhead's BDSM outfit fits the trend pretty well. You could splash some blood on it to make it a bit darker, or throw some money at his friend the Chatterer, who has a slimmer character model. Artis with her standard red dress is about as dark as you can get, but a little blood would make it even better. Sadly, I don't have her prestige cosmetics yet, but here are some pictures. As for her weapon, the Blade of Strife is the thinnest you can get. Sadako only has one cosmetic available to her, but amazingly, it has everything we're looking for. A smaller character model, darker clothing, darker skin. Just be ready to pay the price for it. Now, Dredge and his mass of bright pink flesh are rather hard to miss, but unfortunately, so are all the other options available to us. The skeletal mask skin has arms waving in the air, and the toy chest cosmetic is even brighter than the default. But I still chose the toy chest because it's slightly shorter in height than the rest of them. As for the arm and weapon, the watchful skull and cartilaginous club are the optimal choices for minimizing your profile. And finally, our favorite supervillain, Albert Wesker. 
His black jacket already goes well with the trend, but prestiging it will add another layer of darkness to it. Here's a clip of what it looks like. Yes, I haven't prestiged him yet. How disappointing. But yeah, those are the killer skins that should help you win. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for future content.